All right, similar to vitamins, I have broken down the chapter on minerals into two chapters, major minerals and trace minerals. Uh, your book treats them as a single chapter, which is totally fine. Um, major minerals are needed in usually larger amounts. We also know them as electrolytes. Trace minerals are also important, like in iron is an example of a trace mineral. All right, so, um, but we don't need them as, as, um, as often, or we don't need as much of them. So um, I'm going to put both of these into one lecture, but I broke them up into two presentations within like one video. So let's talk about the major minerals. Uh, sodium is the first one. So I've written here, sodium is the main cation of extracellular fluid. So there's two things here. One, all the minerals in your body either have a positive charge or a negative charge. So it's important to keep that in mind. Ideally, you'll, you'll associate like one of the charges plus or minus with each mineral, but not necessarily in this class. Um, so a cation, which is, you see here, it means positively charged. Negative charge means anion. So we have cations, we have anions, right? So then we have extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid, fluid being outside the cells, fluid being inside the cells. So an example of that would be um, like blood plasma, that would be an extracellular fluid. So out of all the minerals that hang out in extracellular fluid, sodium is the most common positively charged one. So it contributes to the movement of water. So water tends to stay with sodium. And um, it contributes to nerve impulses, heart contraction, which is one of your muscles. So muscle contraction and uh, the most important muscle being the heart. And um, so yeah, it's correlated with, with high blood pressure. So therefore, um, you know, for people that have hypertension, they wanna keep sodium levels down. So 2,400 milligrams would be too much in their case. But that's a rough daily value for sodium. Not for salt, because salt is sodium and chlorine. So that's just for sodium by itself. But when you read a food label, they are also telling you how much sodium, just sodium is in there, right? So um, too much sodium, it's not like anything is gonna happen to you because um, it'll just activate your thirst mechanism and then you'll, um, you'll just drink more and you'll excrete the sodium, provided that there's no other underlying problems. You don't have any kidney problems and they don't have hypertension, things like that. By the way, we call that, just FYI, hyponatremia or hypernatremia. Hypernatremia meaning too much sodium. Hyponatremia, that would cause um, dehydration. Right. So chlorine is the next one. So while sodium was positively charged, Chlorine is negatively charged. It often is hanging out with sodium or potassium. So in the case of table salt, it's sodium and chlorine put together, sodium chlorine. Um, chlorine is a major source of, well, hydrochloric acid is made from hydrogen and chlorine. Right? So that's your stomach juice. That's how things get physically broken down in your stomach. So we're also talking about the digestive system this week. So potassium, um, another important electrolyte that contributes to your heartbeat and other, you know, it makes like an action potential. So it makes like the electrical impulse. Um, it goes through like nerves and muscles. Um, it's very important in your heartbeat. Um, if one were to be deficient in an electrolyte, it's probably uh, potassium. By the way, I wrote it out as K plus. That's kind of like the symbol for potassium. Um, so why would you be deficient? It's often 
Um, because, well, I wrote underneath here, right? So a lot of, a lot of people are taking um, diuretics. If they have like a, a high blood pressure, for example, they're going to be taking a diuretic or if they want to lose some weight, they're going to be taking diuretic. Um, laxative steroids, you know, like people on prednisone or even if you got a short course of like Medrol or something like that, um, that could lead to like an acute uh, hypokalemia. That's what we call potassium deficiency, hypokalemia. Um, calcium. Most calcium is found, I know I'm spending a lot of, I put a lot of stuff on this slide, but in, in essence, 99% of calcium is in your bone. About 1% is in your blood. The 1% in your blood is way more important than in 99% in your bone. Because the 1% of calcium in your blood is going to um, be responsible for muscle contraction. So really we're talking about your heart. And when your body, you know, your body, or the heart is the last organ your body is gonna shut down. It tries to keep the heart going more than anything else, right? So it'll shut down the brain before it shuts down the heart. So it'll certainly pull calcium out of your bones in order to maintain that 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 heart contraction, right? So to, to keep calcium in your blood, your body will pull it out of the bone. And I think we talked about that when we discussed vitamin D. But remember, vitamin D and calcium are related. So if you have more vitamin D, you're likely to have more calcium, right? And so they're regulated by two hormones, calcitonin and parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone is the more... Um, it's a more important one in this case because we're talking about a hormone that encourages your osteoclasts to go in there and break up bone. You do not want your osteoclasts mining calcium out of bone. That's going to cause osteomalacia, or if you remember from the other chapter, chapter like rickets. Um, and then osteoporosis is more related to... Um, hormones like estrogen levels. And so if you look here at the adequate intake, by the way, an adequate intake is when we cannot determine an RDA, just for review. The adequate intake for um, calcium is about 1500 milligrams for women over 50. That's because of the risk of osteoporosis. And of course you wanna give a little more to people that are growing because they're making more bones. And everyone else is about thousand milligrams. Phosphorus. So bone is made from calcium, but also phosphorus and also some magnesium. And there's a few other things in it, but the main, so if I were to say the main two, calcium and phosphorus, and then magnesium is like a distant third, right? So most of it is found in your bones and teeth. However, it also makes up our DNA and RNA, and it's a part of a molecule called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So that's a molecule we'll be talking about. Um, it's really rare to have a deficiency. And then the only issue with um, phosphorus is perhaps refeeding syndrome, and we'll get into that. Actually, I think your your book covers um, refeeding syndrome. So, um, you know, Please read the chapters in your book. I know you're watching these videos, but there are some things in your book that are not covered in the videos, and then some stuff from the videos not covered in the um, book. So we've got two more, magnesium and um, sulfur. Magnesium used in some enzymes. It's also used in bone. It's also used in making ATP. The last one is sulfur. Sulfur holds the shape of proteins. If you remember about proteins, the order of amino acids is very important, but also the shape. The shape of the protein has to be right. So sulfur, sulfur contributes to the shape of proteins. We're made from all like proteins, right? And it's also part of thiamine. So that is the chapter on major minerals. I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second, and I'm going to go over to trace minerals. I'm sure there's a better way to do it. 
but I know this way works. So there we go. Now we're going to talk about trace minerals, minerals that are also important, but not needed in as great of quantities. And so the first one is iron, definitely important, right? So iron comes in different forms. There's ferrous iron and ferric iron. And the difference between them is, well, they're both cations. So they're both positively charged, but like there's a difference in like the strength of like how positively charged they are. So I mean, it's, we're not gonna get into it. Um, so iron's in two places. You've heard of hemoglobin. That's a part of your blood, like your red blood cells that carry oxygen, but it's also in your muscle. So in your muscle, we call it myoglobin. So iron exists in two different states, depending on whether it comes from animals or it comes from plants. So there's iron in plants, but the best iron is from animal sources, and we call that heme iron, and it's absorbed better than non-heme iron. And heme iron actually contains something that helps you absorb non-heme iron. So animal sources are better for iron than plant sources. I'm not knocking plants. I'm just, you know, in this case, animal sources are better. Right. And so we're talking about meat, right? So, all right, so it's important to know that there are some things that inhibit iron. Calcium and phosphorus, which are in milk. So too much milk, too much milk inhibits iron. Not to mention too much milk is, is can cause, in, in adults, it's gonna cause kidney stones and it could ha cause hardening of the arteries. But the iron inhibition, we're thinking about kids here, giving kids too much milk. Um, Tea and coffee, the tannic acid in tea and coffee. But again, we're talking about a lot of tea and coffee. And oxalates in vegetables like spinach, right? So spinach can inhibit the absorption of iron. And you're like, well, wait, I thought spinach had iron. So yeah, I mean, and, and, and then you would say, well, well, I okay, then I shouldn't eat spinach. Well, no, you're eating a variety of food, right? Not too much spinach, not too much um, kale, you know, not too much milk. So, you know, just a variety of foods and you just have some moderation. Um, not all iron is absorbed. So only about 18% of iron is absorbed. And um, only about 10% in vegetarian diets because you're not eating meat. Uh, but it can be higher. It just depends. If the needs are more, then your body will adjust how much it absorbs. And of course, iron is recycled. So when your red blood cells get broken down, so your red blood cells live about four months, right? They're not like our other cells, they're different. They're, they're made in your red bone marrow and they live for about four months and then your red blood cells die. And then when they die, they're like eaten up by your liver and your liver is gonna take the iron out and it's going to send it back over to the red bone marrow to be recycled. Um, iron deficiency is going, it's the most common mineral deficiency. Um, so I was saying, you know, not to get confused with um, potassium, which is the most common electrolyte deficiency. All right, but many women have iron deficiency anemia. And, you know, menstruating makes a, as some of you might know, makes a huge difference in the amount of blood and therefore iron that you have. So losing as much blood as is lost with women, that actually, it's actually a significant amount of iron as well. Um, hemochromatosis is very rare. So it's very rare to have a, um, a toxic level of, of iron. That's more of a genetic um, disorder. So you would already know you would have it. Um, the RDA, where do you get it? I mean, uh, how much did you have? It's, it's, it depends on calories, how many calories. So it's eight milligrams per, you know, 1,000 calories. Um, but it's about somewhere around 18 milligrams, right? And you can get it, I think an interesting place you can get it is iron contamination. And that's a, it sounds bad, but it's a legitimate source of iron, getting it from like iron pipes or a cast iron skillet, 
So it's, it's a legitimate place to get it. Zinc. Zinc's another thing that you can get through like pots, like zinc pans and stuff like that. That's another place where you can get like contamination zinc, we call it. Uh, but zinc's used by many enzymes. It's, um, it also goes through like a circulation, like a lot of it gets um, recycled. It, it, it does have a big influence on younger kids. So it, it, it um, has a big influence in like their growth. Um, I don't know if I said it's like a part of many enzymes. Anyway, so just like iron, it, if you need more of it, more of it gets absorbed, right? But not all of it typically gets absorbed from like the foods. Um, albumin is the protein that transports zinc around. Um, so you'll you'll hear about albumin. It's one of the um, it's one of the plasma proteins. It's one of the proteins in the plasma of our blood. So who do we like? Normally, it's not something we need to think about, but in the case of children or or pregnant women, that might be an issue. Where do we get it from? Very from similar places as iron. Iodine. So there's a we have a um, your 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 thyroid gland is right here under your larynx. It's like on both sides. It produces hormones that regulate your metabolism. Those hormones are made. One of the things that makes those hormones is iodine. So it's made from iodine. And it's made from like this protein called um, thyroglobulin. I don't remember it. Um, not an issue in this country, you know, um, having not enough iodine, right? So if you don't have enough iodine, you're not going to make enough I, um, thyroid hormone. It's fine though, because in this country, we iodize our salt. So, and you, a source of iodine is seafood. So there you go. We're fine. Right. It was an issue in the past and in other countries, it is an issue. You can develop a, like a goiter so you don't have enough iodine and your thyroid gland is like overworking, trying to make the hormones without the ingredients. And then it just kind of gets hyper, hyper, hypertrophy. All right. Not on my game today. Selenium. The only thing you're going to probably see as far as like a question about selenium is Kishon disease, which is um, a deficiency in selenium. Very rare because um, selenium is very common, especially in the United States. Copper. You wouldn't imagine that copper is a mineral that we need. We don't need tons of it, right? But it's, it is a part of enzymes and it helps absorb iron. And then the last is man, not magnesium, but manganese. So again, part of enzymes. If, it, if it's like a, if you don't know what something does, um, like what these trace minerals do, um, and you had to just like take a guess, your best bet is probably like part of enzymes or like a coenzyme. So um, again, deficiencies of manganese are, are very rare. Um, I knew I was missing a couple. Fluoride. Fluoride's going to be in your book like the second one of the trace minerals that your book talks about. Um, it makes, uh, makes your teeth stronger, prevents cavities. We call cavities dental caries. Um, a deficiency would be because somebody uses well water. Uh, municipal water systems uh, put fluoride in their water, so you have enough. Um, but you know, you can buy the bottles and this is what some parents do. They'll like, um, you know, they'll give them too much toothpaste and then they'll put fluoride in They're drinking fluorinated water from the, like the tap, you know, you're cooking with it and stuff and that's enough fluoride. And then you're buying those special, um, like gallons of water that have fluoride in it. So you're giving too much. And what starts to happen is you get, um, fluorosis. So you're getting like, pitting of your teeth, which looks like cavities, and then the parents respond by more fluoride, which makes the problem worse, right? So something you gotta be careful of. The very last one, chromium. Um, the only thing I wanna say about chromium, chromium is something that is one of those um, 
it's like herbals, like you can get on the herbal medication section. And chromium does, um, it is effective. I mean, it works. There is, so if you're diabetic, you got to be careful. Try not to treat yourself with chromium like that because it does, you know, it, it does enhance insulin. So, um, but as far as like naturally occurring chromium, it's not an issue with us. So there you go. I've, I've combined both of these, um, you know, both of these uh, presentations into one like your book does. Um, please read the chapter though. Um, and let me know if you have any questions.